What is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna go over how to survive in ESO PVP. I will teach you how to do things just like this. I get this question so many times on live streams and videos. Now the short answer is I understand these core fundamentals of the game, like healing, resource management, and movement. I can guarantee you if you adopt these practices and understand each of them, you will see improvements in your gameplay. Not only surviving, but thriving in outnumbered PVP. So we're gonna break down these three different topics into three different videos. This one is gonna be about healing and pretty much everything you need to know about healing. You know how it's calculated you know what skills are the best for each specific class uh, and then in the near future we're going to go over resource management how to actually manage your resources whether that be magic or stamina and then in the third video we're going to talk about movement now i do have a movement speed guide and how to move your character but i did that one like several months ago and i really want to update it and make sure that is up to par of pretty much all my other content here recently. So if you are watching this video in the future, there may be links here, there may not be, but definitely check out my channel uh, nonetheless. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe, it's free, and you'll never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to smash that like button. Like, no joke, I'm talking like Hulk smash that like button right now. I know you guys like these videos, but you just guys forget sometimes, so I'm just giving you a friendly reminder. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So the most important thing I can think of when you're fighting outnumbered is going to be healing. Now, I get a lot of questions on how to actually heal your character, whether that's going to be magic or stamina focus. But also, we're going to go a little bit more in depth, talking about what actually increases your healing power, what the advantages of like critical healing is, talk about the different types of buffs like major mending, minor mending. And we're going to talk about each class based skill for both magic and stamina classes to give you guys an idea on like what skills to choose from whenever you're trying to make a build and how to spec your character. So really quickly here in editing note, um, if you guys are afraid of math then you may want to skip this section of the video we go really in depth on how healing is calculated i think it's very crucial if you're trying to play this game and you're trying to play it you know at a high level to really understand the core fundamentals of the game and how it actually works because this will give you tools and knowledge you need for other builds and other characters and it'll teach you the basic fundamentals of the math in this game but obviously, if you want to skip ahead, by all means do so. We're going to talk about the skills after this and like how to actually heal yourself, uh, what skills to use when and that sort of thing, you know, for pretty much every single class. So that one probably is more important for actual core gameplay, but I highly recommend you watch the mathematics of this section. So the single most thing I think you could take from this video is going to be right here. What is the foundation of this game built on? It's built on mathematics. So our weapon damage and max stamina will directly impact our overall healing power. This is the crux of how everything is built off of. For magic specs, it's going to be your max magic and your spell damage. Now, there are a few other heals that are based off your maximum health, but we'll go over those here in a little bit. Those are a little bit more advanced, but the single thing I think you can take from this video is if your stats are complete doo-doo, your healing, damage, survivability is going to be doo-doo. That's just the core reality. This is a mathematical game. That's how pretty much every game is made. That's why you see people say best in slot because you know the mathematics prove that this is best in slot, at least in certain circumstances and situations. So how can you actually tell if this is correct? Well, if you look at our weapon damage here, we have 4,842 uh, weapon damage. So we're trying to figure out the formula that increases our overall healing power based on weapon damage. So there is actually a skill on our bar that we can easily test this. We could take off Camo Hunter. Having this slotted will increase our weapon damage by 3%. So we take this off and change it to any skill we want. Blood Craze does not give us any extra weapon damage. Very, very simple. So remember, our weapon damage was 4,842. Now it is 4,718. So if we just so if we subtract that, we're gonna end up with 124 loss of weapon damage for just taking this skill off. So now if we look at our tooltip vigor, for example, our healing, this is gonna be 17,575 healing power. So if we put back our camel hunter back on, this is gonna give us again that 3% extra weapon damage to 4842. We now have a tooltip vigor of 17,880 which will equate to about a 305 extra healing power based on the extra 124 weapon damage we received. So we take 305 and divide that by 124. The 305 is the difference between resolving vigor without Camo Hunter and with Camo Hunter. 
and the 124 weapon damage is the difference between obviously camo hunter and without camo hunter so our formula is about 2.45 healing power per weapon damage so this is probably across the board in a ballpark number now the easiest way to test if this is a ballpark number is if we add more weapon damage on top of this the overall formula gets a little bit smaller but not by much so i tested this again with rally which is doing the same thing same formula and same setup so it still equaled 2.45 healing per weapon damage now there was a little bit of difference in numbers but the 2.45 was still there everything else past that is very minuscule difference in overall calculations so basically what this means is if you increase your weapon damage by one just by one weapon damage you're going to increase the healing of just the resolving vigor skill by 2.45 this is the overall calculation scaling between the two now there's other skills that are going to be different but this is just ballpark numbers to help you guys understand how effective the weapon damage actually is so another example of this is to look at your max stamina and look at the difference between the overall healing power that weapon damage gives you over max stamina so if we have 25,793 max stamina on this spec, again, our unbuffed tooltip damage with just our camel hunter is 17,880. We don't have any extra buffs at all. So if we remove our food buff here, keep in mind our max stamina is 25,793. Remove our food buff. Our stamina now is 20,758, which gives us about a 5,035 difference in our overall max stats. So now we look at our Resolving Vigor. Our Resolving Vigor didn't go down by much. It only dropped to 16,705, which is about a 1,175 healing difference. Now, if we take our tooltip heal of 1,175 and divide that by the loss of stamina of 5,035, this is gonna equal a 0.23 difference in healing. So what this number means is for every one stamina we add, we're gonna get a 0.23 extra heal on our Resolving Vigor, which is not by much. So this means for about an extra five stamina, we're gonna increase our healing by one. That's the discrepancy here. Um, so weapon damage increases our healing by 2.45 per weapon damage, while our max stamina increases our healing by 0.23. Now it is a lot easier to build max stamina, obviously with food and stuff, but ultimately, whenever you're stacking like infused weapon damage on your jewelry versus, you know, robust, you have to look at that value and that difference. Now, there's obviously some advantages to using robust because it gives you more sustain and it gives you slightly the same amount of damage. But infused will ultimately increase your damage and healing power much more than max stamina. Now, ultimately, this is all a ballpark number. Now, please do understand that the more weapon damage you do accumulate, the overall less value that you're going to get because everything is multiplicative in this game. You can't have, you know, 400,000 weapon damage and hit like an insane god, okay? There's a, a limit and a soft cap to everything. And so I did the same exact test with, uh, I did it with Rally. Uh, and just did the exact same thing with healing power and i'll put the numbers on screen on what i found out in my healing power 5904 weapon damage 2000 or 20,000 through to 15 uh, resolving vigor tooltip and then when unbuffed we went down to 18,150 and our weapon damage dropped to 4996 so if you guys do the same calculations that i did earlier you're going to get a 2.38 damage difference so now as you guys can tell here we have a little bit more weapon damage than i do on my stand blade so this goes to show you that the more weapon damage you have the overall less scaling you're going to get for building as much weapon damage max stamina and everything in between so now that you guys understand that the weapon damage will ultimately affect your healing power how does this build on top of other buffs so for example critical healing is so important i think this is so underrated in pvp so as you see on the right side critical healing does 50 percent increased healing and can be made more powerful with these additional effects so we have a 50 percent base critical healing multiplier then we have to add our critical healing multiplier here on the left so this is going to be an 83 percent increase of critical healing so if we hit our rally up just like this now our tooltip or our healing is 4063 that is our base non-critical heal now if you look there it was 7,435 right there. You see that? So how we figure out this number is very simple. We take our tooltip number of 4,063 right here, 4,063, and we multiply that by 0.83. Why 0.83? Because that is a critical healing modifier that we have right here. We have 50% on the right and then 33% on the left. So we have to add those together, which gives us 0.83. And we take the number of 3,372, and we add that onto our base heal of 4,063. 
which gives us 7,435 as you've seen there. So now that we've done a little bit of math, I'm gonna try not to do too much more, but we may have to. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me down in the comments. I definitely would be glad to explain this more in depth if I'm not explaining it well enough here. So we're gonna talk about mending and vitality. Now there's two types, there's major mending and minor mending, there's major vitality and minor vitality. So kind of how these work is major mending will buff your tooltip healing. This means that you're going to increase the healing you do to yourself and you do to others. Vitality is a little bit different. Vitality is basically healing taken and healing received. That's kind of the two buffs that it is. And what this does is this only increases the effectiveness of healing to you and from other people to you, not your outgoing healing to others. If that makes any sense. How we can test this is while having a draconic power active, we increase our healing received by 12%. So our tooltip vigor is seven or uh, our tooltip vigor is 18,150. We hit our volatile armor and it didn't go up at all. So this goes to show you that our healing received does not increase our tooltip healing power, only increases the effectiveness of the potency of our healing. That's kind of how this works. Now, major mending will increase our tooltip of our heal. 18,150, we hit our mending. We also get minor brutality from this as well. So you guys will see here, we have a 22,000 tooltip of resolving vigor, 22,250. Our major mending goes away and it goes down to 19,235. The reason why it's a little bit higher is because we get the minor brutality for hitting that skill by 10%. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, basically, major mending increases your healing done. Vitality increases your healing received and healing taken. Those are the two differences. I mean, those are the two different types of things. I know it's kind of confusing, but that's kind of how it works. So now if we were to test this real quick with the Vitality, we have a heal of 5,914, 3943, 3943 base figure, okay? And if we hit our Vitality, base heal is a 4398. So this is a little bit more healing, as you guys can tell, than we had before. Easiest way to understand it. And then we also have on top of that, with our mending and we're gonna get a pretty pretty big heal at that point so that's how this works so everything is going to be multiplicative on top of each other in actuality you may not be increasing your healing done by 16 percent because we can't have you know for example if you had 100 percent healing done you couldn't you know do that much more healing it's going to be obviously multiplicative so you're not actually going to get the same value that you may think so a quick recap here, healing received affects your healing after you press the heal button. It does not affect your tooltip heal, it just affects the after effects of your healing, as well as healing done to you from other people. Major Mending increases your tooltip of your healing and increases the outgoing healing that you give to yourself and other allies. So now we're going to talk about how to actually heal yourself. Now this is important. There's going to be two aspects of this section. It's going to be stamina versus magic. Now the stamina is a little bit more streamlined than magic classes are. But for the most part, stamina builds have to rotate their vigor constantly as it provides an overheal based on future damage taken. So what this means is if I'm using my resolving vigor and this heals me over time for four seconds, so that means over four seconds, I'm gaining, you know, obviously healing. As I take damage, this will rebound my health bar back up. This is why stamina is so powerful in outnumbered PvP because I can hit this skill and then go offensive and then I'm getting healing over time as I'm damaging the opponent. Magicka is a little bit different as it relies a little bit more on mitigation and big burst heals from class skills, but it does have access to a healing over time from the Resto Staff skill line in Rapid Regen. Now it kind of forces you to run a specific play style, but it still is one of the best healing over times in the game. So pretty much stamina classes, I can explain this very quickly. Your main two heals for the most part and pretty much every single build you're gonna see is you're gonna see Rally. This is a two-handed skill. Uh, basically, this gives you weapon damage, which is definitely very important, but also gives you minor endurance, which increases your recovery. But the last effect of this skill, what it does, is you heal yourself for 5,077 health when the rally ends. The final heal is increased by 15% every one second, up to a maximum of 300%. So if we hit our rally and then we hit it again, we get a small heal of 6518. But if we wait, you know, a few seconds, now we got a 70, 76. So the longer you wait on your rally heal, the bigger the heal is going to be. Now, what's so powerful about this is it obviously increases in healing. And also, if you critically strike it with extra healing power that we have, obviously, with our build, uh, with the critical healing of 83%. What this means, if this critically strikes, we're getting a huge heal, like a 20 I like got 15, 20k heal in PvP, which is insane. This is the main bread and butter burst heal that you'll see a lot of stamina classes use. Now, the next skill is gonna be Resolve and Vigor. This is an assault skill and it's very simple to use. Uh, what's so powerful about this is it doesn't cost that much. 
and you can roll dodge cast it and it's just a, it's just a great skill this is why stamina classes in my opinion are so much more powerful in pvp than magic classes so how you use this skill is you know you just press it like this and it you know you can see the animation it's very noticeable what's so powerful is you can roll dodge and then hit this skill and what this does is you can mitigate damage from the roll dodge while also getting healing power uh, through this skill and you typically want to overlay this skill as you're kiting and, and fighting outnumbered but what this does is you, you you hit your heal and you can move and you can you know get healing over time and then you can cloak or do whatever type of skill you have now every class has different types of off healing for example, the Nightblade, the Stand Blade that I'm playing right now, has access to this skill called Legion Strikes. And basically for every light attack we do, we receive healing when this effect is active. It's just a little bit of off healing. There's other skills as well. Um, and we just light attack, we get 2,800 health if it critically strikes. But you also have other heals, like the other Morph of Shadowy Disguise, like Dark Cloak. This will heal you based on the percentage of your overall maximum health. So it, again, there's a lot of options here for overall healing. Kind of dark cloak is similar to resolving vigor in a way but this costs magicka instead of stamina and the total healing is based on your maximum health so it's a little bit different than resolving vigor is and it doesn't really scale off of the amount of damage you have rather than your total maximum health so next we are on the magicka nightblade now most classes will use rapid regeneration for the most part now there are some extraneous situations but the rapid regen is pretty much a staple on a lot of magic classes this is similar to vigor but this heals over five seconds and you just put your staff in the air and it heals you over time typically you want to use this whenever you're taking damage similar to resolving vigor as it is a healing over time so you can hit this skill and then go offensive but the only bad part about it is you do have to run a restoration staff you cannot use this on any other type of weapon so next we have blessing of restoration now this is typically going to be used more on a magic nightblade because they don't have access to a decent burst heal this just slams the staff on the ground and gives a burst heal, which is very powerful. It also grants you minor resolve, increasing your resistances just by about 3000 for 14 seconds. So it's a very good skill. It is rather expensive, but again, another bad thing about it is you do have to run a restoration staff. You cannot get by using the skill with any other type of weapon. Again, similar to the, to the stand blade, the mag blade will use dark cloak 100% of the time, unless they are bombing, but that's a different story. Uh, this thing again like heals you over time similar to a resolving vigor but it does cost magic and it does give you another buff in minor protection so typically you want to overlay these skills on top of each other with rapid regeneration and dark cloak on the night blade and when you get low health you're going to hit your blessing of restoration to give you a nice decent burst heal now also you have access to siphoning attacks this is the other morph of leeching strikes as this gives you magicka back and it also gives you health as you uh, deal damage with a light or heavy attack and then also when we're and also whenever we're playing offensive if we're using a staff typically we're going to be using a skill called swallow soul now this heals you for 41 percent of the damage you inflict on the target and this heals you every two seconds for 10 seconds so again this is another healing over time the magic Eye blade is a healing over time class this is why this is so powerful using rapid regeneration dark cloak blessing of restoration siphoning attacks for another heal swallow soul and then there's other aspects like the merciless resolve if you are in melee range you will heal 50 percent of the damage you deal with this skill now you don't want to rely on this skill as a heal but it is decent if you do get it uh, and if it does crit it is very very nice now there is other skills here like the path of darkness now you can morph this to the tw the refreshing path now this heal is not going to be too bad it's similar to a dark cloak heal uh, it gives you speed so it's very useful and also gives your ally speed as well uh, so it is a decent heal nonetheless but at that point you're running five healing skills on your back bar and it kind of gets annoying this is why magblade is so weak uh, in certain aspects because they have to run five skills three four five uh, healing skills on their back bar to even stay alive for uh, an extended duration and outnumber pvp and you can't have all these skills all at once or you're not gonna be able to kill anything so it's kind of annoying it's, it's a cat 22 this is how you survive but it's also kind of how you get pigeonholed on your back bar and you basically just have to heal it out and you know hope for the best but now we are going to talk about magic warden's healing now there's a it's kind of similar to magic night blades in a way they have a skill in arctic blast in the winter's embrace basically what this heal does is it gives you a burst heal and then heals you over time for five seconds and this heal is based on your total maximum health and also it does provide a cc or a stun to your enemies around you if they're within range and they get hit by this ability three times in a row so you hit this and it gives you a decent burst heal and then a healing over time now this is the main burst heal that you're going to see on wardens and for both magic and salmon warden um but you can overlay this with other healing skills for example uh we have 
we're not running resto staff on the ward and we have quite a bit of healing power here so we're going to be using budding seeds now i like this skill a lot basically we put this thing on the ground and it gives you healing over time in the area of effect and if you press it again it gives you a very strong burst heal now this is one of the best in my opinion burst heals for the warden as arctic blast is mainly going to be used as a cc rather than a heal it's just going to be nice bit of health bonus it's not going to be what you're mainly going to be using but budding seeds are going to be your main heal on your defensive bar now also what this does is this heals your allies as well in the area of effect and it's a decent area and you can double tap it and it'll heal uh very strong next we have a living trellis now this could be used with the other morph either one but i like this one i like the burst heal aspect of it so basically we put this as a buff on ourselves, and as we take damage we heal for 2188 health each time we take damage and this effect can occur once every one second and then when the vine explodes whenever it goes away off of us we gain uh extra 5300 healing very strong for pvp as you know we, we take damage it's kind of like a rapid regeneration but it's only as we take damage so it's not as good but it the healing is is there and it's very very nice so next we have lotus blossom now this think of the skill as in similar to siphoning attacks this is a buff so this gives us major prophecy increasing our spell critical but also when we light or heavy attack we gain healing back this also will affect other allies in the area so if we heavy attack we gain a pretty decent heal in 4200 but if we light attack we're gaining about uh 2100 crit heal and a 1419 heal if it's not crit you're always light attack weaving in pvp anyways and having this extra uh, critical is very, very nice for overall PvP, uh, especially if you can, you know, obviously critically strike your healing. It'll make you a lot tankier. Now, there are other skills here, but mostly outnumbered PvP, you really don't use these. Uh, it's maybe Enchanted Growth. Now, this could be very viable. Uh, you could maybe replace this with Budding Seeds if you want to, but I think Budding Seeds is a lot better for outnumbered. As you know, you can heal this and put it on the ground and then wait for the burst heal. You don't have to double tap it. You can just wait for it. There's also ultimates like the healing thicket, which is very, very strong. You just put this on the ground and it gives you a good burst heal. Uh, very, very strong. It's like a budding seeds on steroids and it heals over time. Again, if you want to use a restoration staff, by all means do so. Uh, you will definitely probably use rapid regeneration as it is a good healing over time. If I was to replace this, I would probably change budding seeds out for rapid regeneration or even the living trellis. It's kind of up to you on your play style and build, but this is just what I would recommend. Next, we're on good old Stambin. Now, and on your morph here, I like either one. Sometimes if I'm in a group, I may go Polar Wind, but I also may go Arctic Blast. Now, again, this is just similar to the Magic Warden. You're gonna use this more than likely on pretty much every Warden build you make. Again, it heals you based on your maximum health. So for typical stamina class skills, we have Rally. You guys know what this does. Very, very strong, gives you weapon damage and gives you a burst heal in conjunction with your Polar Wind or your arctic blast whichever you're using and then we have resolving vigor um no brainer again it's your healing over time uh and it's just a staple on most stamina classes now again there are a few other skills you can use like i explained on the magic warden you can use the leeching vines i think this is a little bit better on the stamina warden as you do have you know access to if you wanted to use um cow drops and you proc the leeching vines on people uh you will definitely get a lot of ticks of healing um you also have green lotus this is kind of getting into bar space issues though you may not probably use this i definitely like it though uh, it's a good flex spot skill nonetheless and then you also have the soothing spores if you want another burst heal now sometimes i personally somewhat prefer this in in, in some scenarios especially if you're using a dual wield and sword and board type of spec uh then you won't have access to rally so you can maybe use this as your burst heal if you wanted to i sometimes like this over arctic blast but it's just kind of preference if i'm going for more like seven medium weapon damage type of spec then i definitely will use this because my max health won't be as high to really scale up that arctic blast so next we are on the magic and necromancer now this class so this class will more than likely utilize their restoration staff but they do not have to sometimes you could be similar to that warden spec how we'll run a sword and board but it really just depends on your build um rapid regeneration you guys know what this does already it's a very great healing over time especially stacking with other healing over times we have on the necromancer so if we proc a you know a little dead body here we have this skill called restoring tether and this basically heals us over time and it does a lot of ticks here as you see there it's a lot of healing over time this can proc spell power cure as it is you know a heal over time uh, a very very strong skill i really like this thing it also gives you stamina back and while having it slotted it increases your healing done on this bar by three percent you also have resilient flesh this is one of the best burst heals in the game hands down 
this thing is absolutely amazing this thing basically if it critically strikes you are god mode because it grants you half of the physical and spell resistance for the amount healed for three seconds so basically uh if you are like getting like a 20k heal here you're gonna get 10,000 resistances for three seconds makes you basically god mode uh it also gives you defile which is not a big deal because when we have defile on us it increases the severity of our actual healing but we have one negative effect we actually increase our healing done by eight percent so uh defile reduces our healing by five percent and then we have this extra uh, three percent healing so it actually panned out to be better uh, that we have a negative effect on our character because it does increase our healing. Next, we have Intensive Mender. This is one of the best skills, in my opinion. This thing is amazing. So you can use either Morph here. Uh, Intensive Mender is going to heal in a shorter duration and it lasts half as long. But Spirit Guardian will take 10% mitigation from you. So they're both very, very good. Now, I probably more than likely pick Spirit Guardian because if I'm running a Resto Staff, I do have access to more of a healing over time because this Mender will literally heal you for 5 or 6k. So next we have a kind of a weird skill. Now this is more of an offensive skill. So we have the uh, Avid Boneyard. So if we use this energy while we're you know fighting people, we will heal for the damage done as it, sees, as it says there on the bottom. So this is very underrated, especially for a Harmony Necromancer. This can really save your life in a pinch. There are other skills like Bitter Harvest that will heal you based on your maximum health, similar to Dark Cloak in a way, but this gives you a lot of mitigation, especially after you morph it. You also have Death Scythe. Nobody really uses this except if you're on a very high health tank. Uh, kind of dookie heal uh, unless you have a ton of health, like I was saying. And then you have a very good skill in, ex in Life of Bid Death. Now, this thing is similar to the Budding Seeds on the Warden, as this gives a healing over time, but this thing also will uh give you a cleanse in the area of effect after you morph it it's an amazing skill and i really love this thing it is just so solid for pvp and it heals you over time after you have the uh corpse for five seconds very very good for pvp i really like this thing in small group so next we are on the stamina necromancer again we have rally here no brainer very very strong skill uh, we have again the other morph of the mender spirit mender now this is better for stamina as it gives you a you know a 10 percent damage mitigation and it lasts for 16 seconds so this thing will last a long time and this also will make sure to keep up your undead confederate which gives you 200 magicka and stamina recovery which is very very powerful this is an insane amount of sustain uh, for the necromancer also again we have resolving vigor no brainer here and then we have mortal coil uh necromancer is one of the tankiest classes based on overall mitigation and healing power they have so many good skills they have you know, the mortal coil which heals them over time in conjunction with resolving vigor and spirit guardian and then they have the very strong heal and, and rally it, just the necromancer is such a solid class very very well rounded for overall tankiness so next we're on the good old magic templar now this one now this class is kind of similar to magblade in a way its healing makes itself have to be pigeonholed pretty much the main reason being is like the magic necromancer has so many good healing over times and a burst heal that it's just so powerful the magplar is kind of in between a mag blade and a magic necromancer and overall healing power mag blade is the weakest magplar is the second best in my opinion and the mag crow is you know one of the best for magic classes now most magic templars will probably use rapid regeneration as they don't have a great single target healing over time like the crow does and like the mag blade does so they really have to run a resto staff in my opinion or they can use the bubble skill in living dark now this thing is going to be a lot better next patch in the waking flame we're getting this patch in like two days uh on console so this will definitely be a good replacement possibly for the rapid region because we're going to get so much more extra spell damage for running medium armor and also the new passive uh that gives us six percent weapon and spell damage rather than just weapon damage so this definitely could be a good replacement for rapid regeneration but for now we're going to keep on rapid as it is a on-demand healing over time now we do have cleanse now again next patch we may have to honestly drop this or change the morph entirely uh extended ritual is one of the best defensive skills in the game as it gets rid of five negative effects but next patch we're getting this set called plague break which is going to basically make this skill uh, utterly unusable because you will just take a 10 15k proc and it infects other people around you so yeah we may end up swapping morphs of this skill to the other one to cleanse only two negative effects and but that morph will uh, still heal us but it also deals damage over time uh, in the area of effect and in increases its damage by like five percent per tick so it could be usable uh but again we won't have this probably morph anymore 
uh, until they really nerf plague break it's going to be such an annoying thing on the templar but you just kind of have to adapt and overcome uh all the problems but mag templars they get a good buff to their damage so they may end up panning out but honestly, I don't think so. If you have enough Plague Breaks on you, you're going to be dead. So Honor of the Dead is similar to the Resilient Flesh on the Necromancer. This skill is actually a little bit better in overall resource management. Now, this doesn't get, make you as tanky as, a resilient, as the Resilient Flesh does. But if we are below 75% health, we restore 18% of the ability's cost every two seconds over six seconds. This is very, very good. This gives a lot of magic sustain back without having to have any magic sustain for that matter. So if we are under 75% uh, health, we're going to gain a lot of magic sustain back from the skill. Very simple. This is a strong burst heal. Again, not as good as Resilient Flesh, but it still is very strong. So now we have Channel Focus. Now this is a very good heal. I love this thing. I'm glad they changed it the way this is. Basically, if we cast the Room Focus, we're gaining healing over time in the circle. And we also gain recovery after we move out. So it's just a very strong skill. Uh, in conjunction with cleanse whichever morph you use uh, is a good healing over time uh, especially if you're fighting outnumbered but i think adding rapid regeneration on top of that is definitely the way to go or even living dark so you're going to use these skills as you're healing over time hots to make sure you don't die and then when you get really low health you're going to use your honor of the dead now there are other skills here like the repentance which is very good but again you have to have dead bodies and Magplar really has a problem with bar space and you really don't have any room on your back bar and really any room on your front bar So you kind of have to drop this skill This thing is very useful and very strong because it gives you stamina back as well as health But you just don't have any room for it hasty prayer is mainly going to be used in a zerg I would assume nobody really would use this in outnumbered pvp But it does give a good burst heal and that extra minor expedition could be very valuable uh, Especially in a, even a small group, you know uh, a ball group per se You do have other skills like purifying light which heals you uh, in the area of effect after it explodes Definitely very very good in conjunction with other healing skills like puncturing sweeps As this will heal you for 44% of the damage you deal with this ability so again, it's going to be a lot of layering of damage skills and healing, which makes Templar a very strong 1v1 class. Even 1vx, it is still very good uh, for overall healing power as you're going offensive. So next, we are on the Stamina Templar. Now, as a no-brainer here, we have Resolve and Vigor and Rally. This is a no-brainer on pretty much every single Stamina class I play. You also have Extended Ritual. Now, we can possibly change the morph again to the Ritual of Retribution, it just depends on how bad Plague Break is a problem for us on the Stamina Templar. We just have to wait to see on when we can cross that bridge. But we also have Restoring Focus. This is the other morph of the Magical one. This one gives us Stamina back rather than Magic. And this heals us based on our maximum health, similar to the Magical one. But I think this one actually heals for just a little bit more. A thing I forgot to mention on the Magic class is we have access to Minor Mending whenever we put down a Extender Ritual or a Rune Focus. So as long as we are within the area of effect, we're going to be gaining the bonus of Minor Mending, which increases our healing done by 8%, which is very valuable. I mean, this is, again, as you guys remember, going over the Nightblade stuff, 8% healing will affect our tooltip. It'll affect our healing to others. It'll make us have our heals 8% more powerful. Stamina Templar is actually one of the best classes for overall healing. I really love this, and it's just overall great. Now, there are a few other magic skills that you can use, like Living Dark. Now, the max health scaling is probably going to be better for this skill rather than spell damage because we really don't build that high of spell damage, obviously, on a stamina build. But it could be very useful nonetheless if you maybe want to use bubble. Uh, it just depends on how you have your build set up as usual. Uh, but if you're running like a high health uh, stamina Templar, this could be very strong for your overall healing power. So next, we are on the good old Magic Dragonite. Now, this class has access to a lot of healing over time and some burst healing, but sometimes they're a little bit lackluster. So we have Flame Lash. Whenever we basically make a target off balance, we can Flame Lash them and supposedly get a 17,000 heal over two seconds. It doesn't really feel like it. For the most part, this skill is rather weak because the Molten Whip definitely hits a lot harder. But at that point, we lose a lot of healing power. So I'm in between on sometimes on which morph I like to use. But definitely, I love Molten Whip. It hits a lot harder. But Flame Lash sometimes hit like a wet noodle. But overall, this will give you a lot more healing. Then we also have Burning Embers. Now this heals you based on the damage inflicted by 84%. So basically you put this on the target and you think about this skill kind of like a rally. The longer you wait, the bigger heal you get, but they can cleanse it. But then if they cleanse it, they're going to give you the burst heal back. So you reapply it, you gain 16,000 heal there. 
and if you want to get i guess a small heal you can always just spam it to get a little bit it used to be better back in the day but not so much anymore now we have shattering rocks now i really love this skill the skill paired up with our uh talons we have here is actually very good it gives us a lot of healing power and i prefer this especially in outnumbered pvp let me show you kind of how it works so we can uh shattering rocks here and if they cc break then they um then they give us a burst heal back so wait two seconds there's 8569 healing not too bad not too shabby but the other morph of fossilized will snare them in place but it does not give you a burst heal so what i like to do is i will typically talons and then i will fossilize proc the molten whip that way and if they cc break we're going to get the heal from the shattering rocks and the molten whip heal all at once now for our defensive bar typically most magic dks will you be using rapid regeneration there's almost no way around it you can't always be going offensive on people and if you can be then it actually is very powerful on a dk but for the most part the damage is lackluster because you have to build so much damage mitigation especially for magic classes so we have to use rapid regeneration when we're playing a little bit defensive um i do like rapid regeneration on the dk but it sometimes is very annoying as i'd like to have you know a different skill here like uh like deep breath possibly or something just a little bit different that gives me a little bit more damage because sometimes damage is very lackluster and we also have carterize now i sometimes bounce between flames of oblivion and carterize now I, if i'm using molten whip i will definitely use flames of oblivion on my front bar where the uh, engulfing flames is but if i'm using carterize i would definitely put this on my back bar it's a good burst heal i wish this dealt damage but it doesn't i wish it shot one ball and one healing one i think that would be very good but it is what it is i i think that this skill is very strong uh, especially for stamina dk but magic dk is kind of lackluster in, in certain aspects it does help you stay alive though for sure because if i'm using flames of oblivion on my front bar i definitely notice not having this extra heal then we have to rely on this stupid thing right here of coag this thing is absolutely doo-doo i mean it's gotten better but it still is trash it's so annoying to use this thing is strong don't get me wrong it definitely heals you but it's not as good as any other skill in the game i mean this thing costs three thousand i think we have several cost reduction on this build um uh, so yeah we're also a breton and we have so much cost reduction and it still costs us this much and you know with the honor the dead on the magpar that gives the magic back you have the resilient flesh that gives the necromancers extra resistances you have you know the arctic blast that gives a cc and this thing gives you health recovery it's kind of trash uh, in most aspects of pvp but it does give you a good burst heal especially when it crits but if it doesn't crit you definitely will feel it um other than that there really isn't too many extra healing there's a draw essence which is definitely decent especially for aoe burst it heals you for 168 percent of the damage caused on the initial inhale so it's really not the best i mean it gives us the 5,000 healing there but nothing crazy uh, especially in PvP, it's kind of dookie uh, if we're being real. It's just only good, I guess, fighting an ad. Other than that, there is some off heals as well, which is very weird. We have so many extra heals, but really can't use them. We have the Obsidian Shard, which actually is pretty good, but it does dookie damage and heals two allies, which isn't too bad, but it does dookie damage, so we can't use it. Most Magic DKs will not use Fragmented Shield as it, they have so terrible bar space as is. This would be nice to have, but we really can't run it. Typically, you'll see a DK use Data Trickery instead to possibly get this major mending buff. Then we have Cinderstorm. I really like this skill, especially in dueling. Uh, this gives an AoE snare. Next patch, this will proc Dark Convergence, which is very strong. And it gives a, a nasty snare on top of it. So even if you can't proc the Convergence, this is very good in a choke point. And you gain a good healing over time inside of it. Uh, it's very, very strong in PvP, in my opinion. Especially playing in a small group, you can really hold down an area. Especially with this skill and talents, and even a standard, you can definitely make people's life miserable uh, in PvP. Now we're on the standard DK. Um, this class is a lot more tanky than the Magic Dragonite. We have Resolve and Vigor and Rally. A no-brainer. Again, it's so strong. Um, we also have access to Fragmented Shield, which again stamina dks can use because they have bar space so this will ultimately make them even more tanky than they already are um they also have carterize again this is another great burst heal 
that is very strong in conjunction with rally basically you can use this as another rally and this is just your off heal it's so strong it scales off your maximum resources now so it's a really really good healing skill now some stamina dks will use like dual wield skills like blood craze which again also gives them another healing over time with a master's dual wield so this is overall a very tanky class that has a lot of healing power and a lot of potential as you guys notice, stamina classes are very streamlined. They can compare to magic classes. They need a lot more explanation on the magic than, they, than stamina counterpart because most of the time they're, you, you're using just vigor and rally. Now there are a few extraneous situations here that think they're worthy of note. So some stamina classes can use the bow with a scattering shot and morph this to draining shot. Now it is very different and most people don't use this, but it is definitely an option if you want a little bit more healing and a burst heal. Especially if you're getting away from maybe using the conventional 2H and whatever kind of weapon. If you're getting away from Rally, then definitely having Scatter Shot and the Morph of Draining Shot will definitely provide a decent burst heal uh, on pretty much any stamina class in the game. Now we're on like a semi Magic Sork here. I didn't feel like respecking, but how Magic Sork works is it's different than pretty much any other class in the game. Magic Sorks use shields over healing power per se. So having Hardened Ward is going to basically be your, your damage shield. Your Basically, it cushions your health bar whenever you take damage. Now, this is a harder class to play, especially if you are brand new and you don't really understand anything about the game. This is probably going to be one of the more difficult classes as it's pretty much different than any other class in the game. Now, if you are healing, now this is very important. You want to hit your shield first. So you want to hit your Hardened Ward and then you want to hit your Healing Ward. What this does is this will overlay your health bar so you can actually get the healing part of the healing ward. So while the shield persists, so the target is healed for 33% of the shield's remaining strength. So if you're getting hit, you're gonna have your hardened ward up and then you're gonna hit your healing ward. This will protect your healing ward from getting mitigated until your hardened ward is gone and then your healing ward will start to get hit as well. But this will increase the shield size based on your health pool so the lower health you are the bigger shield you get now there also are other skills like crit surge this is a typical magic sword skill because whenever they do critical damage they get a little bit of healing it's nothing crazy but it is nice to have a little bit of extra healing power just with light attack weaving it definitely will be nice now they will use the other morph of dark deal it will be dark conversion now this will cost them stamina and give the magic back after they you know shield up and hit a healing ward typically what they'll do is they'll go into the dark conversion and give them uh, a little bit of magic back and a little bit of health that's kind of their combo on their healing it's a little bit different than most classes like i was explaining we they don't have vigor or anything like that just disregard this but this is kind of how they heal on the back bar now you can use a Nolma here but i personally don't like it i like to have two shields and that's it and I like to use this other morph of Bound Armaments that increases my max magic. It gives me a little bit of extra resistances. That's just my personal opinion and kind of my spec and build. But you definitely can do double shields here with either Dampen Magic or Harness Magic, whichever one you prefer. But I would say Dampen Magic would definitely be a little bit better. And finally, we are on the Stamina Sorcerer. So this class is again a stamina class so we have vigor and rally but there are a few different skills here that you can use i think dark deal is one of the best skills to use in the game this thing gives you healing it gives you stamina back and it gives you stamina over 20 seconds and it costs you 2200 magic this is literally the one of the best skills in the game you will see stamina sorks abuse this skill so much they'll streak away and then they use dark deal to get their stamina back up give them healing power and it's just overall great but there are other skills like surge which is still good i just think that there's not enough bar space now again like i was explaining earlier with the bow on, on the sam dk with draining shot now you can use this it's definitely very good it gives us a 7.6 key burst heal in conjunction with crit surge this is a very strong build that can definitely be very different than most stamina specs in the game other than that stamina sorc is very unique in its aspect of healing power it has two semi burst heals with rally and dark deal and has a great healing over time in resolving vigor now it doesn't have as much healing power as like you know all the mending does on the dk but it has 
again one of the best sustained skills in dark deal so that is pretty much it for all the skills that you need to know on pretty much all the classes magic and stamina versions now there are different caveats and the more experienced you are the more you can play around with these but this is just a ballpark guide on to get you guys you know understanding which skills you really want to use and prioritize on different specs now we're going to go through a few examples of me playing in pvp and explaining kind of what's going through my head we will touch on a few things about movement and overall like hiding a line of sighting but it's mainly going to be what's going through my head about healing power and kind of why i'm rotating my skills in this certain way and direction so this first clip here we are on my stamina nightblade and we come up here at the top we see several blues up here they're all in stealth i'm trying to maybe get a, a stealth uh, bomb here with my soul tether but i get stunned and take a lot of damage we pop down and hit our heal and then we go into our shadowy disguise to basically go invisible getting our resource back up a little bit now we get top in charge we immediately go for a crit rally there we had 12.5k heal so we're back up the full we're taking advantage of our overall movement speed on our build by keeping distance and trying to pull them away and trying to see you know which ones are going to push through as you see there we're always hitting our vigor keeping it up uh, right before we go into a fight to get our healing up we get cc we immediately roll dodge and then hit our vigor to get our healing over time up taking a lot of snares and a lot of heat so we move back a little bit more taking again advantage of our overall movement rebuffing our skills back up putting our rally and our siphoning strikes and then you know heavy attacking to get our resources back up as we can and also to get our ultimate gen going so this guy comes up here pops a colossus ultimate now we're cloaking we get somehow stunned by that stupid uh, day draw thing. So we come upstairs, hit our vigor, get our healing power back up. Now we're going to focus this guy. He overextends just a little bit. We hit him with light attack, surprise attack, light attack, rolling blades, and then shoot our spectral bow and kill him. And we hit our vigor. Now we cloak. Now we go into a soul tether, and then we go into spin to win and kill him. And we roll dodge vigor there to get our healing power up again. Now we're in a 1v1 against this Templar. This guy will eventually die. Uh, he somehow, yeah, I burst him here almost, and he uh, somehow misses my whirling blades. Maybe somebody could explain this uh, right, right here, um, right now. I am hit him with whirling blades, but it didn't execute, or didn't even deal any damage. So it's whatever. But uh, he's running away now, and we're putting back our speed on. We're going to stun him here. Hit him with light attack surprise attack, light attack rolling blades, and light attack rolling blades. So as you've seen there, we always were rotating our heels, making sure our health was always topped off. So here we are with the next clip. Now this is a 2VX with me and my buddy Exodium. Now we are on the Stamina Templar, so we're playing a little bit of a different spec. This one's a lot more healing power and potential, and less overall, you know, great burst, but just overall, just it's a fun class to play. So see this guy rezzing and we get yoinked over here. We always are hitting our vigor. Make sure it's up 100% of the time, just about. It will save your life because it does mitigate damage as you take it. So we come up here into biting jabs. We take in a little bit of damage. We get behind that little little uh, stairs there, hit our vigor. Uh, now we roll dodge and cleanse, and now we're be buffing our skills back up, taking a little bit of damage. We go back and try to line a sight, but we get yoinked back in by that tank. So we are rebuffing, hitting our vigor. Now we're gonna focus the tank because he's gonna person that's gonna kill us um, from that chain pool. So now we're gonna come back in here, and we come in for a burst with our crescent sweep take a little bit of damage i bar swap and rally and now i'm rebuffing my skills back up and now i'm jabbing and taking a little bit of damage i roll dodge vigor there get some line of sight and trying to figure out who we want to focus next hit my race against time so i don't get snared and then go into jabs and kill him hit my vigor right before we go into damage now we're going to go into jabs into the jabs we're taking a little bit of damage here we cleanse or hit hit my buddy's cleanse there and then we're going to go for some kills now. We really don't need to heal too much because there's only like two people left. This guy's running away. We hit him with Javelin into jabs. And that is a GG. Again, always make sure you're keeping your vigor up. It will save your life. I'm telling you guys. And one last final example here. We are on the Stam Templar again. Now, this is at late at night. And there is a Zerg here. And we don't realize it yet. So we're fighting this guy. Uh, hitting with jabs trying to get him out of stealth we kill him now we're rebuffing up we're hitting our rally and then there's comes yellows out of nowhere now the best thing you can do is go find line of sight like we did but there is literally so many we're trying to hit our heels we hit our crescent sweep to kind of uh try to kill maybe a few people in the back but we're just going to get screwed over sometimes there's really nothing you can do uh if you're fighting this many people outnumbered 
this is just what's going to happen. You can just try your best to get out and try to survive and try to heal yourself. But at the end of the day, if there's this many people, there's really not much you can do. So that is pretty much all for the video, guys. That is healing 101. That is pretty much everything you need to know about it, how it works, how it's calculated, how other things buff it. Uh, two class examples on what skills you want to use for your healing skills uh, to make your own builds. Two actual in-game examples of me healing and kind of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. I hope this video helps you in PvP. If it does, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. I would like to know I'm at least having some sort of impact on your overall gameplay and making you guys better. So like always, we're gonna be doing these giveaways ever so often. So if you guys made it this far into the video, I want you guys to comment DK sucks. And the first person who comments that will get 100K gold on the PS4 NA server. That is the only server I can guarantee uh, you will get gold on. So just comment that. I'm just curious on who watches my videos. We did this a few days ago as well on a different video. I just like to do these. These are always fun to see who actually watches my whole video. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.